Hello everyone and welcome to um, Japan Living Renting Stuff Starting Your Life podcast. This is part five and this is probably gonna be the last one. Because I don't really have anything else to talk about when it comes to starting your new life in Japan. So in the past in the past podcasts I talked about renting an apartment, internet, mobile uh, traveling and stuff so now it's just going to be like a kind of conclusion um getting everyone uh, the right information and yep yeah, just basically telling you the conclusion that i came to uh i still live in tokyo uh it's been a few weeks uh, i said my company offered me a flat for one month or well basically until i found my own apartment but they said uh it's only for one month uh so that was really helpful. I found an apartment in uh, Shinjuku, well Shinjuku Ward, uh, in Takanobaba region. Now this region is very popular uh, when it comes to students and partying. However, uh, my flat is quite um, how should I say this calm. Uh, and really not noisy at all. Like the people who live here are pretty much like uh, not even students I guess they are like uh, wor- working people um, not too many people live in this house actually on the first floor um, the last flat is completely open like you can actually call, uh, climb in from the balcony it's uh, it's crazy and not too many flats are rented which brings me which, which does bring up a question like uh, could Tokyo even go bigger? It's already 36 million people. Four years ago I was here, it was 33 million people. So it's almost like, well, a little, well, something less than a million per year in increase. And there's still more space. Um, so, okay, let's talk about um, money-wise. So this flat, it's a 1K, uh, 19... Uh, square meters that's 7.5 joe it's um it's an apartment it's a small apartment with a unit bath which um which actually means it's like a a pre uh designed unit of a bathroom Uh, i have the toilet and the bathtub together like in one small place it's i think it's the smallest bath i've ever seen it's um there was a kind of a hand washer above uh, the tub uh, in one of the corners that I I took off Uh, I just basically had to have a screwdriver and that's it Uh, and now I can actually uh, get in the tub and I've also went to Tokyo hands Uh, I've been trying to find this this is well something that you can describe as ofuro no ise which means um, bath chair it's the thing that if you go to public bath uh, you are given like a a basin or whatever it's called and and this kind of chair that you can sit on and just clean yourself thoroughly so i was looking for that i couldn't find it anywhere in the recycle shops and i'm going to talk about recycle shops in a minute uh so i bought this for uh 2500 yen at Tokyo hands it's the right size I can put it in the bathroom like it fits it's comfy and basically it just does what I need to do it's just I can sit in the bath because otherwise uh, the other problem is I can't really put a bath um, curtain or a shower curtain in my bathroom or should I say bath hole because um, uh, I can't really find a Tsuparibo that, well, Tsuparibo for you guys who don't know, it's like uh, this kind of uh, uh, rod that you can put in between wall sections. It's like you can uh, fix it and uh, it and you can put like a lot of stuff on it. I, I don't know how to really, I don't know the English word for it. It's, it's like the, the hanging rod that you can put anywhere. Uh, I can't really put that in my bathroom because um, it's kind of um, small and uh, weird design. 
So every time I take a shower, I actually get the whole bathroom wet, including the toilet and everything. So I had to buy a mop. So every time I take a bath, I just mop up the whole bathroom, which is basically around one square meters. Anyways, <laughs> maybe two. Uh, yeah, so I wanted to take a shower sitting down. That's it. That's the bathroom. Not a big deal. I have a quite big Sentaku Okiba. Uh, Sentaku Ki Okiba, which means uh, washing machine with a place for the washing machine that is for now storage because i actually found coin laundry is quite close and you can wash your wash 4.5 kilos of uh, your clothes for 200 yen i know in the long run it's better to buy a washing machine and some people may have concerns about well it's like people you like other people wash their dirty underwear in that it's those washing machines are taken care of. And if your washing machine breaks, you have to call an engineer and it costs you a lot of money. Plus buying it, plus transporting it. No, I mean. And actually, if you know coin laundries, they have a kind of pre-program where, where you can rinse out the, the washing machine before you use. And to be honest, Japanese people aren't dirty. So it's... It's not a problem, and it's, it's really close, it's like 5 minutes by walk, you can sit down there, read a manga or whatever, it's it's 20 minutes anyways. And then I think for 100 yen you can also dry your clothes if you want. It depends. No, actually, the drying is 20 minutes and the washing is usually 30 minutes. Yep. So I'm using the, the place for the washing machine as a kind of storage. I actually put a Tsuparibo... Uh, above it so I can put my so I can hang my my shirts and stuff and uh, now we're we've finally come to the main room which is well it's it's basically a room it's a 7.5 Joe room don't ask me how much is that in square meters I think it's like 15 or something uh, I have a really small balcony a uh, really really small one but I don't really use the balcony much I just Maybe in the summer I will. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what to put there. Pfft, absolutely no idea. I didn't even need a balcony. It's just nice to have a big window. Uh, which again, I had to buy a curtain for that big window. Uh, it's uh, 5,000 yen. In Don Quixote you can get a 2 meter long, 1 meter wide um, heat, sound and sunlight uh, isolation curtain well they say it keeps the sound out but i'm still testing it and i'm not seeing any good results anyways 5000 yen uh and they give you two of these so basically you get 200 times 200 curtains with uh with the pins and stuff i think that's that's quite a good deal donkey chan um i bought a um, ground sofa i guess that's how you call it uh, it's basically it's a sofa it just isn't too high from the ground it's actually your city it's, it's like a floor sofa I think that's the right word floor sofa uh, a two persons uh, ground or uh, sorry floor sofa uh, for 4,500 yen from a recycle shop and now we at the recycle shop topic uh, I also bought uh, a 20 inch monitor for 2,800 yen which before I bought it, I went to Akihabara and I could buy a 22-inch no-name used monitor for not less than, well, maybe I could buy one for 8,000 yen. Still, <laughs> I think 20-inch and it's Dell and it's used as well and it's in perfect condition. Pretty much okay. I needed the monitor just because... Well, I stream sometimes. Well, I try to stream more regularly and I do record some gameplay videos. So I do need a secondary monitor. And it's also good to have a secondary monitor if you just watch YouTube and you have some jo uh, has some research to do or some, some, some work to do at home. And you just, yeah, I mean, I found it really irritating when I'm watching a video in the back and I don't even pay attention to the video itself. It's sometimes good to just, you know, just take a look to the right and mm -hmm, okay cool <laughs> that's just me 
what else in here? Well, obviously there's an aircon, it's working fine. It's a bit too loud on the outside unit, but you can get used to that. It's not that much of a problem. Um, and the kitchen, of course, the kitchen, the kitchen. Um, yeah, the kitchen has an, an induction plate, uh, something, cooker, stove, stove stuff. Uh, it's nothing fancy. I haven't even tried it out. Uh, I was thinking about getting a, a wok for that, but a wok won't really be efficient for that because obviously the wok has a smaller surface that does get in touch with this um, this uh, this cooker. So it's actually better to buy a pan if I ever will um, cook for myself. But to be honest, there are really so many inexpensive shops here to eat at and I love Japanese food so I don't have a problem with that and I think it's really not that cost effective to cook here that's just my opinion I have a small fridge a really small one but I mean it does the trick I don't need much food anyways I just buy everything fresh uh, I have a little cabinet above uh, the sink and uh, yeah, well, obviously there's a sink in the kitchen and um, there are a few storage places that I could use. Like I put the, the bathroom sink that I took off in that uh, big uh, storage place. Um, I also put my suitcases there and some other stuff. And uh, there's also a container or well, they call it a shoebox, but it's more than a shoebox. It's actually quite big of a shoebox. I actually put all my clothes in there and it's perfect. Um, and I'm still planning, well, I brought my air bed with me and one problem is, is that in Japan and America as well, you get 100 volts. Now this air bed was made in Germany and I use it in Europe and it does blow up quite sloppy-ish or weak-ish on 100 volts, but I think it's fine. It's, uh, I can't blow it up to, well, I, to be honest, I can't remember how hard I could blow it up to, but it feels all right now. I just needed to, you know, um, blow it up for more time. Like this does usually blow up in like five minutes, but I might need a half an hour to reach the same hardness in that case okay what else could we talk about oh yeah so one thing is renting the flat uh my rent is 65,000 6,500 plus is the maintenance fee so we are at 71,500 right now uh but by the way the owner lives like just above me like uh, he owns the, f the it's usually like uh in japan usually every bigger mansion or building or whatever there, there are okay there are two types of buildings at least to my knowledge mansion and house house is usually the one that's like maybe made of wood or something lighter and maybe four people can live in it like it's it's really slim walls everything is very slim uh and um, there are these mansions which are sturdier more people can live in it like this one is like five stories high um, and the fifth floor is all of the owners there's like a loft and he owns the place so i'm actually paying the owner sixty five thousand and six 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 thousand five hundred for maintenance which is trash sewage or sewerage um cleaning I guess um, well common area lighting uh, yeah I think stuff like the elevator we have an elevator which is quite slow and small but still we have an elevator uh, yeah so it's 71,500 that's the beginning now gas uh, once you get the apartment and the key uh, you step in the apartment and you realize, well, um, there is electricity, maybe, there is water, maybe, but there is no gas for sure. Or maybe there's gas, I don't know. Like, uh, I came into this flat and there was no gas, but there was electricity and water. So I was like, okay, well, what the heck? And then, uh, actually, the Fudo-san, the, the rental agency, gave me a, 
a very good pamphlet that explained everything and basically you have to call three numbers well you could actually do with two but i'll tell you why three uh first you should call gas now they could schedule the gas um it's basically tokyo gas uh that also do electricity now the gas so, so we call them like um on a day and the next day between three and five he said uh that well they they said that they're gonna send an engineer so it's quite fast so the engineer came and um yeah he basically came between three and five and it took him like f maybe 30 minutes or maybe even less maybe 15 minutes to explain everything and he basically just went to the there, there's an outside compartment stuff right next to each of these flats and um or these apartments and he opened it and he just like switched on the gas uh, did a few tests um uh, confirmed the number on the gas counter and then um yeah he opened basically the tap and he was like okay can you just confirm that it's hot water so everything is fine yeah he uh he he told me how to uh, operate this um this um hot water thingy because <laughs> it's, it's 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 all electric it's like a panel on the on the wall and you just press a button and it's, that's it that that's what you need to know and you can uh, up the 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 temperature or or down the temperature if you need to and it actually also shows time so i'm actually using that as my clock <laughs> as a digital clock it's perfect uh you should do the same with uh electricity and water now the gas guy who came from t uh, from tokyo gas uh he said that he could also do the electricity but their company only deals with 30 ampere electricity whatever electricity compartments now i have a 20 ampere and 40 ampere switch and he said, well, they can't do anything, even though on the outside meter it says 30 amperes. He doesn't understand why I have two, and to be honest, I don't understand it either. Uh, either of these switches, if I turn them off, I, I completely turn off the electricity. So I don't know why this, there are two switches. I don't know where I, why I don't have 30 amperes. I don't know why he couldn't operate or uh, fix or maintain uh, the 20 or the 40 ampere um, compartments it's whatever you should basically uh, when, when you call up um, uh, Tokyo gas you should tell them like yeah this is what I see this, these are the switches this is what I see on the meter this is what I see on the switches can you fix it no okay fine which is not not even fixing it just um, basically you you enter a contract and with uh, Tokyo Gas, you can't enter into a contract unless it's a 30 ampere electric um, circuit system. So then you call this other company. I think it's called Tokyo Denki, maybe Denki Tokyo. I'm not sure. It's basically the Tokyo Electricity Company. Um, and they don't need to do anything. You just phone them and you're like, okay, I just moved in and um, I would like to uh have a new contract with you guys and i'm gonna stay here blah blah blah, blah. and they just send you like uh, in a few days they send you a letter and uh, and you can either pay the bill uh of the electricity gas uh, and the water at the company or the convenience store uh, or you can fill out a form and then uh, they will take it off your account which again takes one or two months for them to process it so in the first couple of months you probably get like um, uh, these checks that you will have to pay in the company but then after that it's going to be fine uh, so the gas as well you just call them up and like hi i just moved in this is my name this is the address um, i would like to do this blah 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 you do the same with the water again it's nothing fancy nobody comes out same with the electricity you just call them up tell them who you are tell them what what is up and uh, they're just gonna redo the contract now as i came here uh the water guys well i i called up the water um number and they said that well the previous tenant still 
has the contract with them, so he didn't even tell them that he's moving out. So it's okay, they're gonna redo it. So don't 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 worry about that thing. Um, they just said like, well, he should have canceled it. So that that means that I should also cancel it once I move out. Although this apartment is gonna be my home for the next two years probably. Uh, however, they give me like a form at the at the rental com uh, not rental company the the apartment agent, whatever it's called. Uh, like they give me a paper to cancel the contract. So you can cancel. I think there's an additional fee to that. <sighs> I'm not sure. Um, yeah, initial cost though. I paid 300,000 yen as the initial cost. Uh, I think I already talked about it, like what components there are. I'm not even sure which I paid. I mean, 300 yen isn't bad with the deposit and with the first month's rent plus i had to pay like for this one week of rent that um that that i was in uh for the last week of march because i moved in like before the last week of march um i mean they cleaned the flat nicely actually they've changed the locks i got free keys i don't know why i got free keys but i have free keys so good for me I'm gonna probably leave one key at the company and I'm gonna give one key to, well, girlfriend. And um, yeah, pretty much that's it. Um, what else do you need to do? Oh yeah, internet, internet, very important internet, at least for me. <laughs> uh, internet, right now I've applied for this mobile. Uh, you should just check out mobile, M-O-B-A-L. They have a SIM card that they send you over the post. And uh, you have to activate it online and you get 7 gigs internet. And uh, well, it's unlimited internet. It just, uh, I think after 7 gigs, uh, they decrease your speed tremendously. Um, it's not bad and it's for 30 days and uh, you and with this one, you can make calls and you can receive calls and uh, receive SMSs and uh, even make uh, even 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 send SMSs. But keep in mind that if you make a call or send an SMS from this deal, you'll be charged. Like they actually charge your card with it. Uh, so be careful. Plus, uh, you should. I mean, I'm planning to use this for 30 days, uh, which is, I think I have 15 days more for its usage. I've tested it, you can receive calls. I haven't tested making calls though, because I didn't want to get any extra charges because it's quite expensive if you do that. So this card actually gives me everything I need. The only problem is it's, if you want to call somebody, then be prepared to uh, pay a lot but if you don't have anything to like if you don't have anybody to call and you can just call people online like your friends as in line as in the application line um, then you'll be fine um yeah well what else is there though mm, yeah recycle shops i found a really good recycle shop uh it's near shinamachi uh it's like not too far from Takano Baba station. Uh, the closest station is Shinamachi. Uh, and you can get there from Ikebukuro. There's a Seibu Ikebukuro line that takes you there first stop. Uh, just search for Shinjuku Hiroba, which means Shinjuku mm, market kind of thing. Hiroba, I think it's, uh, yeah. Or maybe it's square called Hiroba. Yeah, anyways, they have two floors full of stuff. Like the second floor, all furniture. You can hardly, barely move. They have so much, so much furniture. It's crazy. And good ones. Like, uh, obviously, they are all used, but they have really good prices. And you just basically go in and uh, search for yourself. You can ask them for help. I think, well, they don't really speak much English though but uh, you better prepare your Japanese if you want to explain something like what you're looking for but usually no it's like a, an odd couple they have um, 
they have everything like uh, they have uh, washing machines they have vacuum cleaners obviously everything is used they have rice cookers they have um, tvs uh, hangers um, glassware uh, utensils everything everything so just, just take a look at it just google um a recycle shop or yeah i think well just, just try to write shinjuku hiroba in japanese and uh yeah you'll find the place it's near shinamachi station i can only um recommend it because uh yeah if you need stuff just go there first check out what they have even if it's used the japanese people tend to leave you stuff in quite a mint condition like I was I was really uh, amazed how well the condition was uh, compared to the condition that people leave stuff in in Europe, for example. I'm still planning to buy a few tables, but I need a specific height of a table. So I'm probably going to go there. I need also an electric uh, distributor, whatever it's called. And um, yeah, pretty much that's that's it uh the internet yeah so the internet problem um you could ask your agent like what internet uh does he know about in the region that your flat is at but actually the agent couldn't really tell me so we so i actually googled and uh, wrote emails and called some companies up but in the end your best bet is just go for NTT Docomo. Uh, they have shops everywhere. They don't only sell SIM cards or phones or phone deals, but they also have internet. Pretty good one at that. Uh, be very wary that if you're looking for internet, be sure to ask them if it's unlimited. And I don't mean unlimited in a way that you'll have internet if it's unlimited data. Because I've seen internet providers trick you in a way that, yeah, it's unlimited, but after 7 gigs, you'll get 128 megabits per second. It's like, what the fuck is that for Wi-Fi? Like, seriously. That's just stupid. And it costs 4,000 yen or something. Now, there are, there are a lot of scams, so be very wary. You won't really find anything less than 2500 to 4000 for an unlimited home wi-fi so just go to ntt docomo or jcom or um or um asahi or au whatever just yeah get a representative sit down with them ask him like okay this is my address i want unlimited data internet wi-fi at my home please and they will help you and they will inquire and uh, the only problem i found with entity Docomo, but it might be with everybody else is that uh i've applied for it like a few days ago and uh, it's like they could only arrange for an engineer to visit your home like 20 days after uh, application or something it might be that this is a very busy uh time for um for changing your 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 apartment or it might be just the fact that they just have so much work i don't know so the guy is gonna come in the 19th of april this is actually first of april april is full however everything i've just said until now is true so uh, I, I don't take april is full uh seriously at all right um uh, and i will pay four thousand yen per month Probably it's going to also be like a kind of take it off my account thing after a while. And the guy will come like 19th of April, which is a problem. Um, you can also, well, they, like the lady explained to me quite well what the deal is. You'll get a kind of uh, a 24 hour support for one month for free. But she made it quite clear that if I don't want it, I I should unsubscribe because it will cost me 500 yen more per month. It's like this support kind of thing. If your internet is broken and you're an idiot and you can't fix it, then some like you you can call a number and uh, 
they will they, they will try to fix it for you ASAP. I don't think that's needed. Well, the, for the first month it might be because it's Japan. I've never really had my own internet deal here. So a guy will come. He will do some magic here in the wall, and then uh, you can also rent a router from them. And I declined that offer. It's not too expensive, but still, because I brought my own router that I know that and I know how to manage, and it's mine. I told them no. So if you have your router, you can even buy a router in Akihabara or somewhere. I don't, I don't even mind. And one more note on Akihabara. Uh, it's good to go there for certain stuff, like if you like made cafes or AKB48 or or if you want to look for SD cards uh, or SSDs. Uh, there's even an old, old school game shop where you can buy Nintendos, like the, the old Nintendos, the Super Nintendos, um, and old games, uh, like... <laughs> There's so much stuff there, but it's mostly very, very expensive. Like, it's only good to go there if you want to look at some high-tech stuff like, wow, such things exist, or if you want to go there for some specific wire that you can't really find anywhere and you need it now, yes, then go to Akihabara. Otherwise, please try to check out recycle shops. Even if it's used, it doesn't mean it's bad. Even if it's used, it doesn't mean it's dirty. You just have to clean it. And make it your own, and it's uh, it's cost effective. It helps the environment as well. And uh, yeah, I just I'm just so glad I got this floor sofa. I'm so glad I brought my own air bed. You can buy actually an air bed for for those who who come here to Japan and don't have a place to like a place to sleep. I hope you have a place to sleep. But if you have a place, but you don't like the bed, you like, like the bed because it's too too hard for you. You can buy an air bed for five thousand yen ish. Uh, I think a double bed actually in Don Quixote. Your first go to place should be Don Quixote for anything. Don Quixote, say you, recycle shops. You can buy anything in recycle shops seriously, and if you don't mind you stuff, go ahead, by all means. Um, so all in all, 71,500 plus, I think. Well, I've sold some, some gas and water and electricity bills and they, sh they should sum up to hmm, mainly 5,000 per month. Like I'm thinking about, um, so 4,000 for the internet, that's fine. So it's 75,500 for me. I think 4500 is going to be just about enough to pay off my electricity, my gas, and my water if I'm not, you know, well, I'm not, not even saying stingy, but if you just keep an eye on your consumption, like you don't leave the, the light on uh, for no reason and stuff, or you don't leave the aircon on for no reason, then I think it's going to be fine in 4500 So all in all, just to live in Tokyo, in downtown Shinjuku, in Takanobaba, which is a quite popular place, and I technically it's three minutes for me from my door to the JR Lines uh, ticket gate. I'm I'm serious. It's just right over there, <laughs> um, and I'm pointing there, but it's 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 really just there. And um, I can't really hear the train. Obviously, I can hear the train a little bit, and but I can't hear any cars around because because mm, the these these streets are really like um, for just the the, uh, the people who live here. So there is no passing traffic here. Um, really, like it's it's a nice and and, and cozy place. It's still downtown, it's still in town, it's still Shinjuku, it's still Tokyo. But it's cool, it's cool. And uh, I'm really glad I get this, I, I got this, so I'm basically I'm, I will get 80,000 as the whole just living here. And I have all the rest of my salary for food and entertainment and stuff. 
which is I don't mind telling it. I think I already told that in like um, previous podcasts. Uh, so my contract is two hundred thirty thousand uh, gross as an engineer, as a, as a well IT engineer uh, at a middle-sized, small-ish company, uh, software software development company that I really don't want to say though. And uh, I think it's only for the first year, and I think it's because I'm a foreigner. I will get two thousand. Uh, wait, no, two hundred thirteen or seventeen thousand yen per month net. So that's what I'm getting on my bank account. So that's pretty good. So minus eighty, I still have like hundred and forty ish. Let's say hundred and thirty. Let's say hundred and thirty thousand yen to spend uh, on food and just live. So it's pretty good. Uh, feeling pretty good about myself, and uh, I'm gonna actually start next Monday finally at my job. Um, and I have everything done. Like uh, I, I really finished everything. I I got I got my flat. I got all the the contracts, the gas, electricity, um, water, and internet. I got some of the furniture. Well, I brought my bed but you can just go to Don Quixote and buy yourself a bed um, curtains as well from Don Quixote recycle shops one month more than enough but I'd say you should get one month to get everything done because you have to go to the world office you have to go to this that that mobile all the stuff just you just need one month to settle and start your life and then to have like a an uneventful life so to speak and you can make your own events it's not the life that's making your events it's you who controls your life but yeah that's all about that that's all i wanted to tell you about in this podcast uh, i hope you like this one uh, i'm not gonna pretty much make any more about life and itself in tokyo i think i've said everything that you need and then off you go so thanks for listening. This has been Roberto from Tokyo, and I hope I will have a very nice two, two to three years here.